Hey, what is going on, you GME holding Grim Snarl? Playing some games with Tempozard today. Before we get into the list, I did just want to mention to go check out channelfireball.com, number one place for competitive Pokemon content, and to buy some singles. So, if you guys need cards or you want to get better at the game, head over to channelfireball.com. If you make any purchases over there, use code as well GG. Um, so I did it again, where I played 25 games with a deck on my stream, twitch.tv slash AzulGG. Catch me there every day except Thursday, usually playing Pokemon. Sometimes I'm playing some other stuff, but usually playing PTCGO. So if you want to catch some more PTCGO action besides the YouTube channel, first link in the description. All right, so Tempo's Art. Played 25 games with it. This is the list I came to. Um, it's nothing too ridiculous on what you guys have probably seen. One card I don't play that a lot of people have been playing is the Mars Shadow. And even with Chaotic Swell being like really popular are not really popular it's good it's played in picaram even with it being played heavily in picaram i just don't find that it's like i'm not even able to even if they get out the swell i'm not able to consistently use the marsh shadow and because it's only really good against picaram consistently it doesn't get a lot of value in any other matchups so it's just not worth playing in my opinion so no marsh shadow in here i tried out double for a little while didn't really like that so we're at the, the basic 222 line for attackers here the two reshis are the two blacephalon the two cramorants um and if you guys don't know how this deck works the way we usually play games is we start attacking with Cramorant or Reshizard, and then we use second Cramorant if we use the first Cramorant slash Blacephalon to kind of close out the game. So we use Cramorant and Reshizard to start doing some initial damage, putting some uh, putting on some initial pressure, trying to draw some initial prize cards, a lot of initials there, and then we kind of close it out with Blacephalon slash Cramorant to like either take one big one not well, big one hit KOs with the Blacephalon, or using Cramorant to snipe specific things to take our last couple prize cards like KOing to Dene's. Or even against like Eternatus carrying like a Zigzagoon, like a one prizer off the bench to draw a prize card, stuff like that. Um, so that's where the Cramorant gets involved. Um, regular uh, good old support cast in the Jirachi, the Mewtwo, Two Today, Crobat, and Aura Corio. Um, the Great Catcher is like the one card I'm a little bit iffy on here. Like I've had it in here and it's, it's had its moments, but I feel like it might just be better as something like a third Cherish Ball just for more consistency on getting out that Reshi's Art initially. Because Reshi's Art generally is our initial go-to attacker we usually just want to use rushy start first with a double blaze or a flare strike if we uh did go first and go like a turn two flare strike um so i'm not sure on that i have pokey gears in here still because finding welder your initial welder is such a big deal that uh yeah i like the pokey gears i just want to find welder asap um once you get the first welder flowing you've been you've been through your deck a little bit so it's a little bit easier to find the other welders you used hearth a couple times stuff like that um or you can start chaining that welder with mewtwo so that's another what another thing you can do um, because welder like yeah, welder super important to get going and play pretty much every single turn for hearth of course and i've had 14 fire right now a lot of people have been playing 13 but i was feeling like i was a little bit short on energy pretty consistently in games went up to the 14th i wouldn't even hate like a 15th but you only have so much room for stuff uh 14 definitely i felt like i felt it it felt like i felt the difference there for sure from 13 to 14 so i definitely would keep rocking 14 basic fires from here on out and yeah i think that's the list don't think i didn't mention really was zig zig zagoon but Helps fix math, helps fix numbers to take uh, KOs like Flare Strike plus a Zigzagoon, knocks out like a Picaram. So that's it. Let's get into some games. Okay, here we go. Um, opened up the Cramorant, which is not great. And depending on the matchup, it could even be worse. But we'll have to wait and see what our opponent's playing. It is the Senescorch V Max, it looks like. <clears throat> so I do want to, I actually want to start with Cramorant in this matchup and start using Cramorant early. Uh, we did get a draw, so I'm going to switch into that, use some Stellar Wish. We're looking for hearth didn't find it could still find it on the next turn and our opponent could put hearth in play i'm just gonna go ahead and attach and pass so usually the line we want to take in this matchup is we want to cramorant wherever they put their energy and then it's usually a center scorch v so we hit it for 160 and then they knock us out with that center scorch v here's a pokemon catcher what the heck and then uh <laughs> all right radiating heat so we can win the game this turn with double blaze plus goon so we're gonna go for it that's a lot of quick balls uh, okay, so we're gonna go quick ball away Mewtwo, grab Reshizard, and Trishizard, Stellar Wish, grab the Hearth, net the Jirachi, quick ball away the Jirachi, grab ourselves a Crobat, put the hearth in play crobat for four don't use hearth yet so we just need the goon plus a double blaze and that should be game here two more energy just need that last energy so i want to crobat first because we're already guaranteed the goon off the quick ball energy attach quick 
quick ball away the heart. So it's a quick one here up against this uh, Senna Scorch. And Goon. And Double Blaze. KO Senna Scorch VMAX. Or Senna Scorch V. <laughs> and win the game. All right. Donked. Okay, so after that very interesting uh, game one where we played against the Salazzle Senna Scorch, uh, we're into game two. And maybe up against the turn, just we see the dark deck box. Uh, we have a very similar start to our game one start. So we're also get a dub. We might have to have our opponent dead draw once again. We get a mulligan to work with and we'll have a top deck. So we should have a decent amount of options. It is, looks like ADP. Excuse me, ADP position with everyone's favorite crushing hammer. So it's gonna be fun. The way this matchup goes is usually we kind of want to double blaze one hit KO the ADP, but with the, since we know they play crushing hammers, that means that our opponent can get a crushing hammer heads and then take away an energy from our rushes are. So if we put three energy on our rushes are this turn, plan to get three next turn and double blaze. If they just get one crushing hammer heads, we can't get to six and then can't want to KO the ADP. <laughs> Two mulligans is usually pretty good. Um, when it's another hearth and a crowbat, it's not as good as it could be. Who knows? Maybe they'll reset stamp us turn one because we have an eight-card hand, but I doubt I doubt they even play reset stamp, so it's probably not gonna happen. But this is a good time for our opponent to actually maw wild us and even just take away my crowbat option. So they did open the station. So here's where it's like it would be fine, where we'd want to go with and just kind of knock this thing out with a double blaze. So that's probably gonna be our game plan. Cram and snipe ADP would also be fine. So either of those would be great our opponent is going with the intrepid sword no mawile thankfully so we get to keep our crowbat the draw power might be important here and we can actually go like a great catcher play so we could go like i don't know we can go like hearth quick ball of fire grab the rushy zard bench attach great catcher get rid of two more hearths bring up the adp so the great catcher actually works out really well here to thin out the hand and then draw to triple scoop up net <laughs> from triple hearth to triple scoop up net here we are um let's see <clears throat> i still want to try and get a turn one knockout here i almost don't even want to grab a jirachi but i'm going to it's still correct get a jirachi and play unfortunately I don't have a switch to switch into it and we're just gonna have to go with that dead change losing two more nets so really low on nets now there's the welder though so that's great and we will go ahead and uh try and hearth away you have an energy here. They could play like Verdian Forest. If they play Swell, we'll never be able to get this hard into play. So maybe what I should play around instead. Because if they have Verdian Forest, I can utilize Verdian Forest anyways. And yeah, Welded Rushy's Art. Hope for a switch. Hey, two we've been drawing a lot of stuff in pairs and triples here. But we'll take it this time around for sure. Get the double blaze on this ADP. And like I said, we could have like switched into Jirachi and waited a turn to try and double blaze for 300. Take the one at KO. But the problem we run into is if they just play or we know they play crushing hammer so if they just hit a heads then we can't double blaze on the following turn because we won't have six energy we'll have five <laughs> so there's no reason to like hold out for a turn knowing knowing they play crushing hammer so that's something you guys can like apply in your like open deckless tournament games like if you just like know they play those cards play like they could hit that because they might even play to hit that as well like they see you sit there with three energy on your rushes are maybe they go crushing hammer tails but now all of a sudden they did a change when they normally wouldn't have because they can go get another crushing hammer then they get heads and then you can't double blaze next turn so you kind of just like almost wasted a turn because now you have to go into like two hit ko in the adp anyways so may as well get that first hit right now and then do a ko here and here comes a crushing hammer there's a head so now we have to find another welder to even actually take the knockout on this thing here comes another crushing hammer thankfully that was a test i guess they could have hit triple heads here and then we wouldn't have been able to even attack next turn i guess we could like kramer into it maybe so like top deck welder is probably our best top deck here switch into jirachi jirachi for welder is not great because we don't have a ton of switch cards left. So the chance of us drawing a switch card off of that welder is pretty low, being down half of our switch cards, three nets, one switch. So that's not great. So even if we switch into Jirachi, get the welder, getting a switch card off the welder is not super likely. So top deck welder here would be the best. Welder or Poke Gear into welder, that would also work. Uh, and then just Flare Strike, take out this ADP and kind of go from there. And actually in this matchup, Rushy Star can almost, once we get this KO before the ultimate rate, if we can get it, Rushy Star can actually kind of solo the ADP deck by itself. So we whiffed. Let's go like this. Now I gotta switch into the Jirachi. Stellar Wish into a Welder. Okay. Uh, and then we have to Welder into a Switch card. Here we go. Onto the Rushy Zard. 
give me a switch card no such luck and that's what i was scared that was gonna happen and now we are in kind of a terrible spot all right let's go with i wouldn't hate drawing into another welder so let's go let's go with yikes <laughs> let's go with yikes let's put a welder on top this is like the situations where like i would like a reset stamp sometimes i play resets or i had the reset stamp here and for in here for a little while and ended up cutting it but these are the situations where you would like to have the reset stamp so now they get to ultimate ray and this is kind of where this matchup falls apart for us like we need to stop the ultimate ray basically or be so far ahead that the ultimate ray doesn't matter so like if they open a station we double blaze chaos station they come up they gx attack we can no longer kill the adp but then we could just go like boss or great catcher ko off the bench into crime rank ko to dead end and the game's over right so they get to use their ultimate ray but we're ahead on the prize trade so it doesn't matter in this situation they'll be extremely ahead on the prize exchange and in this situation there's literally nothing we can do about it so we'll probably end up losing this game i don't see us winning this here comes a great catcher so they're gonna bring up my oracorio here ultimate ray ko it set up the zation and then they're just a boss or another great catcher away from winning the game yep or Dedene, i guess but now i get to draw with oracorio so they should have ko'd oracorio definitely a little bit of an oversight there from my opponent but like i'm saying it kind of doesn't matter we're gonna lose pretty much no matter what i hate to say it so like with the game is it feels like the game hasn't even i mean the game has started but it feels like there could be more to the game but there's really not at this point unfortunately okay the one thing we can do to give ourselves a chance we can it's not unwinnable at this point there's still a chance we win this game it's very unlikely is what i've kind of been saying is we kill this ADP with Flare Strike, and then they hit into our ADP or our, our Reshi Zard with the Zation, and then we use Baby Bond to attack on the next turn, which can't be KO'd by potentially like a Brave Blade or something, and they would only draw two prize cards off the Baby Bond. So, all right, Reshi Zard goes up. We're gonna start with uh, Hearth Away, a Jirachi. So the Baby Bonds are in there. I have two Quick Ball, a couple extra Welders. I'm gonna go with Oracorio, hopefully draw into it. I could have sent up the Jirachi, but that would have involved me needing a Switch card this turn, which I once again. I'm kind of low on, so I'm gonna go ahead and welder to my Rushy's are just one, um, just draw card, just to draw cards. See, there's that baby blind. So we drew those cards. Now we got this in play, attached to it, and flare strike. So yeah, our plan is to attack with baby blind next turn. Uh, this also involves my opponent just not having a boss or a great catcher, and they have a <laughs> seven card hand. So we probably lose. We'll see very soon. And it's also possible they play something like the Zigzagoon or Leon, and then they actually just want to KO my Rushy's are right now. Most more likely it's gonna happen is they're gonna have a boss and just win the game. There's the goss. Did they have a boss? And if not, there's the boss, yeah. And if they for some reason couldn't find a boss this turn, they would have to hit into our Reshizard. And if they hit into our Reshizard, then we can retreat to the Blown attack with Blown. And if they set up another attacker, they can even KO the Blown, they don't win the game. So then next turn we could win with our Reshizard once again. Or we attack with our Reshizard once again to close out the game. Doesn't go that way. And uh yeah, become a little bit short to the ADP in this one. Just whipping that switch card off that welder on the on the third turn there gonna go second here uh yeah <laughs> i have to think about it for a second i always think about it for a second but go second we want to go second turn one attack usually what wants to be what we go for wants to be is what we go for kind of want to be what we gotta go kind of gotta go for got the reshi's art if we want to do that we also have the kramer so we have an option for our turn one attacker they opened a zation so we're probably going to want to go with the reshi's art we'll see for sure they got the coding energy so it is luke metal we could open up with just like a cram snipe into it to be honest we don't have to go with the double blaze the double blaze does set us up to be able to use flare strike on the following turn which i think i probably want to do so let's go for the double blaze here let's go for the double blaze they also didn't get the luke metal down turn one as well which is good for us cherish ball to double blaze punch it start doing damage got the blacephalons for later what else did I want to check here? There's anything else I really want to check. Take this. Bench. Sell a wish afterwards. We're going to see if we get... Yep, the welder. <laughs> Perfect. I think it's the correct way to play it out. And then we can go... We could have gone... I, I just don't want to lose the fire crystal, basically. I can avoid it. But... Let's see. We'll go bench. Bench. Quick ball away the Kramer because I'm probably not gonna use Kramer at this game. Grab the Crobat to save the crystal. Uh, play the scoop up net. Set up this, bench this, and then Crobat for four. We just need a fire energy here. And we whiffed. Oh my gosh. Hey, outrage. <laughs> 
we whiffed a fire energy or a hearth we have 12 fire energy four hearth left in the deck and no hits i could have switched back into jirachi to look for a i guess i should have switched back into jirachi to actually look for a hearth actually because then i have yeah that was a mistake to not to not switch back into jirachi there to, to sell our wish that's such an unfortunate whiff though there's a marnie so hopefully that will get us into an energy here yeah insanely unfortunate whiff but we're not in like the worst spot ever though we can, we're still playing the game there's a hearth a little bit late but better late than never i guess in this situation and uh we got a spooky year as well so we can go like hearth away the quick ball maybe the top deck gonna have to settle for an outrage KO on the doll I guess unless we get boss's orders off the pokey gear which we can definitely look for so hearth I'm actually gonna give up the hearth here now that we drew that and then pokey gear let's see if we hit that boss nope welder's not bad though welder two um <clears throat> I guess just the Reshizard because we do want to be able to flare strike potentially a lot of quick walls i'm gonna go ahead and mute to a uh, welder on top of the deck and then just go outrage for the knockout that way we top deck a welder so if they like marnie us i mean i think our reshi is gonna be fine here i don't think our reshi is going down or anything and actually if they hit into our reshi here we can just go outrage to knock out the luke or knock out the zation here because they haven't actually used their gx attack yet so it's only got that minus 30 from the goggles it doesn't have weakness right now because of the coding energy but they'll hit us for 130 or 230 my bad 131 will quite cut it they're hitting us for 230 with the brave blade so outrage will actually knock out the zation and put us back into a pretty fine spot overall i would think i think we'll be okay if that is the outcome at the end of this turn if not we can just start swinging with flare strike as well so if they don't do anything we can just flare strike at the very least so we'll see what they got here they could possibly pull off the gx attack from the luke metal which would probably be worst case scenario for us is that they actually gx attack with luke metal this turn so we'll see if they can put that together there's the quick ball it only discards a tool scrapper i guess we do have the giant hearth in play though so that means that they can just use that <laughs> themselves they can just giant hearth to get rid of metal energy and uh metal saucer it later i was, I was kind of mentioning that they didn't quick ball away energy there but they can always get it they didn't get the luke metal here either though they just grabbed another zation uh another coding so two coding energy on the active one that's just kind of good for us because that means there's I mean, it already didn't have weakness. It's not like it doesn't have less weakness now with two coding. So instead of having to fight through two stations with no weakness, it's just, uh, well, we could, they could still get codings on these, but like, it's less likely, right? So it's just better that the coding energy is on this station than not. And then there's the research. Yeah, I'm curious as to why they didn't grab Luke Metal. Luke Metal would have been pretty good there for sure, I think. Um, I would have tried to do the Luke Metal play this turn because then it makes so that the stations with the codings just can't be one hit KO, but they're just a Brave Blade. So we can just outrage to KO this thing. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're also going to hearth and welder to our Blacephalon. Get rid of a quick ball. I don't have a few of those in the hand. So welder to the Blown. Pretty dead hand, but we do have that outrage KO now because they haven't GX attacked. So we, st we do 260 damage, minus 30, 230. There's ourselves a couple prize cards to work with as well. Some fire energy. And yeah, now we're, I feel like we're in a pretty good spot here. They're also down two coding energy. So that means that if they want to get rid of this weakness on some of their other Zations, they need to find their a couple of their last coding energy, the last few coding energies, which could be tough for sure. Looks like they're going to be able to get a Zation online. The, qu the big question is just, does it get a coding energy? Otherwise, it's going to be very easy for us to get the KO with the Blacephalon. Uh, yeah, it'll be super easy for us to get the KO with the Blacephalon. They found their goggles really fast. We had not enough. They got the goggles. They got the coding on. They just didn't get the Luke Metal GX attack off. That's where it becomes the magic can get really close. If they get the coding energy, they get the GX attack off, get the goggles, make it so the station just can't get KO'd by Outrage. And then also Luke Metal is a, a pretty big tank with the coding itself at that 320 HP if it has, or effectively 320 with goggles and the use of the GX attack, the effect of the GX attack doing minus 30 more damage. I don't know if our opponent has it here. They're playing pretty slow. All right, here comes the Marnie. So they can still get, like, Coding Switch, which could definitely make it so we actually whiff the knockout this turn. We could definitely whiff the knockout this turn. See what we pull. Energy Welder. Scoop up net. We can draw some cards with Welder onto the Blown. Hearth is still in play, and I wouldn't be surprised if Hearth stayed in play the whole game. Sometimes Luke Metal decks just don't play stadiums, so... The station is ready to go. Do they have a Switch? If they don't have a Switch, I feel like... We are just going to win this one. Yeah, I think this one is just pretty much over. And and even if we did 
Uh, even if they did have the switch, it's not a coding energy there, so it'd be pretty easy for Arbocephalon to get the KO, and then they don't have anything else set up past that. So it should be a pretty clean uh, a clean dub from there, I'd feel like, even if they had the KO on our rushes out this turn. They don't have the KO on our rushes out this turn, so it makes it that much easier for us uh, right here. Check how many Marnie are they down? Is it two? Is it one? It's two. Okay. Uh, giant Hearth away, Giant Hearth. Build up some energy. I think I will welder to my blown here just to draw cards. I think I'm going to scoop up Net My Mewtwo and actually put a welder on top. If we do get Marnied, um, have some extra draw power to go with it, or even reset stamped. You could also get reset stamped. Then Outrage again, take the knockout. No need to Flare Strike or Double Blaze. Just do the Outrage. I guess there was like a re there was like a, a decent argument actually to like hard retreat the rushes are to actually attack with Blown this turn. Because then we're just an energy attachment plus outrage away from the knockout. And if they don't um and if they were to go like boss care our rushes are, that means they're not playing Marnie, so they're not disrupting our hand, which would be pretty big at that point. So actually I think it was probably correct to actually have hard retreated there and attack with Blown instead. Because then it makes it we're just like an energy plus outrage away from being able to uh, win the game. Yeah, we see them giving up the Luke Metal actually there off the quick ball. Still would be okay to GX attack here, I think. Not that great, I guess. Yeah, they're not in a great situation pretty much no matter what. So, But yeah, we could have gone hard retreat, blown knockout. Then we're just attach outrage away from winning the game. Which seems a little bit better than what we're currently in. Because now if they go Marnie, we could whiff theoretically if they get like a coding energy, whiff the knockout. But with the Reshi's Art, Outrage always gets the KO. Because they haven't GX attacked. And with that discard of the Luke Metal, it looks like they have no intention of GX attacking. So it definitely would have been a little bit better, I think, if we had just gone Retreat, Fireball Circus, and then, yeah, just an Energy and Outrage away. Ooh, they gave up a lot of stuff there. Did they not have? They didn't have Energy. They could have used Giant Heart, though. I think they missed that. They could have Giant Heart away one of those Metal Energy. And then... Metal saucered it onto the Zamazenta. So they could have attacked with Zamazenta this turn. It looks like they're digging deep for those coding energy. So top deck boss would be really good here. Just another welder. Oh, we knew that was our top deck though. Um, let's see. That's the way that. Could have maybe thin out the rushes are, but I don't mind keeping it around for a quick double blaze at the end of the game to maybe do something. Boss is in the deck. I could retreat to the Jirachi first. I think I am going to do that play where I talked about where I'm going to kind of save the Reshi's art here, actually. And if we just get boss here, we do just win the game. So we're going to check for that first. We did whiff. Take a switch. And then I'm going to switch into a Cephalon, actually. Just save the Reshi's art around over here. Attach. Fireball Circus. Discard one. Okay, because now this, like, if we get stamped or we get Marnied, whatever... Rushy's Art can just get the KO with Outrage. So that means they also need to go with Boss for the turn and KO this instead. Because Outrage is doing too much damage right now. And they've seen quite a few bit of their deck. So I'm not really scared of Crushing Hammers at this point. Of them going like Knockout Active plus like double Crushing Hammer heads here. They have 13 cards left and we haven't seen a Crushing Hammer at all. So I highly doubt that my opponent plays Crushing Hammers. I could be wrong. But uh, that'd be, I guess they could have like, you know, maybe like prize three Crushing Hammers or something. That's why they haven't seen them yet. But it doesn't seem like they play Crushing Hammers. So I'm not afraid of that line either. But really does just come down to uh <laughs> do they think they can do they have like a route here? I don't think they really do. They have to KO my rushes are basically, I think. So if they have, like great catcher plus stamp, something like that would actually work. It wouldn't be too ridiculous for my opponent to play those cards. So they definitely could have that. Like great, yeah, great catcher plus stamp here would be uh would be a play for sure. We'll see if the, we'll see what they got here though. Here comes a Marnie. So there's the Marnie, which means it would need like a great catcher here. Like coding energy plus great catcher. KO my Reshi's art. And even then, we could still easily get the dub still. And this hand's actually pretty good for it too. We could just like quick ball, dead a change, try and draw to a bunch of stuff for our Arbocephalon to take the knockout. Here comes a Poke Doll. Are they going to run to the Poke Doll again? They are. So we're going to have to get through another Poke Doll again here. Not that big of a deal. We'll give it the Cramorant with the Hearth and then just go ahead and knock it out with a Fireball Circus again. Or maybe we top deck boss. Got to switch. I think we should run them out of Pokédoll so I don't have to worry about it anymore in the future. We still have four Fire Crystal left, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, just Fireball Circus for one. Take the knockout. Yeah, they're digging for the Coding Energy. They still have some left. I I mean, I would assume they play four. Um, so they probably have two left. They maybe play three, so they might only have one left. But they do need to KO the Rushy's Art. The Rushy's Art immediately just, like, knocks out. Just, like, knocks out their station. So they have to KO my Reshi's Art here. But, yeah, we have a ton of draw power in the hand. We got Daddy Change. We got Oracorio. 
Jirachi. So it shouldn't be difficult at all for us to actually get the return knockout. Even this thing has the coding energy at this point. I think we should easily be able to get the knockout with the Blacephal on it. We have so so few cards left in the deck, only 22. And we draw over like half our deck this turn or almost half our deck this turn. Plus Jirachi Stella, we should dig a little bit deeper. Yeah, they got the boss. They didn't get the coding though. They should attach to the bench of Amazenta. So it's going to be, a, yeah, super easy for the Blonde to get the knockout now. I don't think I have enough basic fire left. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So there's at least one in the deck. Is there two? There might actually be two. All we need is three. Uh, two doesn't quite do it. We just need that third. I think we actually can just win with a hearth usage here. Uh, I'm going to set up the Drachi just in case I am mistaken, but I'm pretty sure. Well, that'll do. So fire crystal. No need to use the heart then. Switch and then circus for the KO and get the dub over the Luke metal here. If they'd gone with an earlier GX attack from the Luke metal, we might've been in trouble, but they didn't go that route. Uh, definitely the route you want to go. And that's going to do it for these games with the Tempozard. Uh, see you guys tomorrow.